Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this video lecture series in which we are talking about neural networks and deep learning. So in this video lecture we are going to see that how we can apply gradient descent over the logistic regression and that too by using the computation graph. So in the previous video lectures what we have seen that what a computation graph is and also we have seen that how we can use the forward propagation step in order to find the final output of the computation graph and then we are applying the backward propagation step in order to compute the derivative or the gradient of the computation graph. So let us look at in this example as how we can find the gradient descent using the logistic regression. Okay, so let us look over to a some recap as what we have studied earlier. So this is the equation of Z where Z equal to W transpose X plus B. Okay. Also we have a predicted outcome that is Y hat. Here we have referred Y hat equal to A. You can use any alphabet for representing the final output. Here we have represented it with A. And then you have that is the predicted outcome y hat equal to sigma of z. Okay, we have already this studied this equation earlier. And for a single training example, we generally define a loss function or the error function. And this loss function is defined as L of a comma y, where a is the predicted outcome and y is the outcome that is defined on the training examples. Okay, that is the correct outcome that is equal to minus times of y log a plus one minus y log one minus a. So this is basically the loss function. Okay. And this loss function is also called the error function. And we have already learned about this function that this function is defined when we have only a single training example. So now if we have this loss function, so let us draw a computation graph for this loss function. So what we have here, we have the parameters W and B and let us suppose that we have only two parameters. So I would write here, we have only two parameters or features instead of writing parameters, I'll write features. And what are those features? Those features are X1 and X2. Okay. So corresponding to those two features X1 and X2, I'll have two parameters W1 and W2 and one real number B. Okay. So I'll using these parameters and features, I'll draw a computation graph. So I have two features that is X1 and X2. And corresponding to X1, I have a parameter W1 corresponding to the feature x2 I have a parameter w2 and a base value b okay now in combination to all these features and parameter what I will get is I will get an equation z as instead of writing w transpose x plus b I can elaborate this equation as w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus b okay so let me draw a box here okay and suppose that if i have this value of z then i can easily apply this value of z in order to get the predicted outcome y hat that is equal to a here as i have already said you and further applying it to the sigma so this will give us the predicted outcome y hat and further if we have the predicted outcome y hat so i can apply this predicted outcome y hat or a in the loss equation or the loss function okay so i will basically get the loss function as l of a comma y where a is the predicted outcome and y is the actual outcome Okay, so this is basically a computation graph that can be drawn using the two features x1 and x2 where x1 and x2 are the features given to us and w1 and w2 are the parameters and b is the base value. Okay, 
so now let us continue so this is quite a very clear representation of what we have seen in the previous slide okay in order to view cl clearly this is in the printed form okay now let us study now we have already got the predicted outcome as a so that means that we have already completed the forward propagation step of this computation graph and now what we need to do in uh, we need in order to find the gradient or the derivative we need to have a backward propagation step also we have already covered the forward propagation and that is why we are getting the predicted outcome a and now we have done the forward propagation so we need to do the backward propagation also in order to find the gradient or the derivative of this computation graph okay so in order to find the gradient firstly we will find the gradient with respect to the intermediate variable a so what is the gradient of this final loss function this final loss function a with respect to the intermediate term intermediate variable that is a so this can be represented as da these notations we have already studied about in the previous video lecture so if you are not familiar with these notation you can refer to the previous video lectures also okay where we have clearly been explained about these notations and that this da is basically equals to derivative of our final loss function that is l of a comma y whole upon da so this derivative of loss function with respect to the change in with respect to the derivative in a so this is the derivative that we need to find so how can we find this derivative this is basically a very good mathematical calculation so you need to be a little bit proficient in calculus and derivatives before dealing with this computation graph so i hope you would have studied about derivatives in your graduation classes or in the iit jwe preparation so i hope you would be proficient enough in making the calculus problems so let us consider here so i would solve this using the blank space here okay so what we need to find we need to find derivative of our loss function that is l of a comma y with respect to a okay a is the intermediate variable so what is our loss function here our loss function is l of a comma y equal to we take minus sign as common y log a plus 1 minus y log 1 minus a so this is my log function uh, cost function sorry this is my loss function okay this is my loss function right here so that will not forget the name this is my loss function and now i want to find the derivative of this loss function with respect to a so this will become minus sign i'll take as common i'll write d upon d a in bracket y log a okay plus 1 minus y log 1 minus a okay so now taking uh, now i'm finding the derivative so the derivative would be d of l a comma y I'll always write the HS, HS, LHS so that we don't forget that what actually we need to find out. So we are finding the derivative with respect to A. So A would be treated here as, con, uh, as a variable and uh, Y would be treated as a constant value. So minus sign I'll put as a common one. So Y will be at, as it is and the differentiation of log A will be 1 upon A plus 1 minus y will be treated as a constant and the derivation of log 1 minus a would be 1 upon 1 minus a and by applying the chain rule we also need to find the derivative of 1 minus a so derivative of 1 minus a would be minus 1 okay so this would be dl of a comma y upon d of a 
that is equal to minus sign i'll take as common so it will become y upon a plus minus sign common 1 minus y upon 1 minus a and now i need to do is i need to multiply this common sign inside okay so i'll multiply or shift this common sign minus sign inside this square bracket so it will become minus y upon a and minus minus sign will get cancelled plus 1 minus y upon 1 minus a so hence we have got this derivative here okay so the derivative of l of a comma a, a comma y with respect to a will be minus y upon a plus 1 minus y upon 1 minus a so i will write this derivative here in the previous slide so this derivative that is d a came out to be minus y upon a plus 1 minus y upon 1 minus a okay okay so that is clear to us now one thing you need to do is this equation is a quite a uh, complicated equation so what we can do is we can quite simplify this equation okay so now i'll tell you that how can i simplify this equation so now what i have in the previous slide as d l a comma y whole upon d a that was equal to minus y upon a plus 1 minus y whole upon 1 minus a now what i can do is I can do some simplification with this equation now see clearly that uh, how I am simplifying this what I need to do I need to make the denominators equal first so that I can add the numerators and for doing this in the first minus y upon a I'll be multiplying it with 1 minus a in the numerator and 1 minus a in the denominator and I can do this because numerator and denominator will get cancelled and the equation will be as it is. And after the plus sign, I have 1 minus y upon 1 minus a and to the numerator and denominator, I'll multiply it with a. So what this equation will become? This equation will become denominator would be same as it is that is a into 1 minus a and numerator would get added up so it will become minus y plus y a plus a minus y a so plus y a and minus y a would get cancelled and that will be equal to a minus y whole upon a into 1 minus a so this is my simplified form okay so i'll write this simplified form also here so my simplified form finally came out to be d a equal to what my simplified form was a minus y upon a times of 1 minus a okay so this is a minus y whole upon a into 1 minus a okay so i'll put this in box so this is highlighted clearly okay so now i hope this much is clear to everyone those who are watching this video lecture now what i need to do i need to move backwards and i need to find the derivative dz or dz okay so what my derivative dz would be equal to it would be defined as the derivative of the final loss function that is a comma y with respect to dz okay and dz could also be represented as dl a comma y whole upon da into d a upon d z 
okay so we can also write this in this form using the multiplicative rule and these type of simplifications we have already seen in the previous video lecture where we were solving about a very small and easy equation indeed like this which is a very complicated loss function equation okay so in order to find dz what i should have i should have a value of dl of a comma y upon da and that value should be multiplied to da upon dz so i already have the value of this derivative as this is da okay so what i have the value of this value as dl of a comma y upon da equal to a minus y whole upon a into 1 minus a into now we need to have the value of this that is we need to put the value of da upon dz here okay so now i'll be finding the value of da upon dz okay so let us move to the rough section i think i should use this blank space also okay now what i need to do i need to find da upon dz okay and this is equal to d upon da of sigma of z because a was the predicted outcome and we have already represented our predicted outcome as sigma of z also we have sigma of z as equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z i have already told you in the starting of logistic regression that how we basically defined this function sigma as sigma of z equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z okay and this z is ultimately w1x1 plus w2x2 plus v so we'll simplify this z later but firstly what we'll do we'll find the derivative so this will be d upon dz sigma of z equal to d upon dz instead of writing sigma of z what we can write 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z we can write like this also we can write like d upon d of z sigma of z equal to d upon d of z instead of writing in the reciprocal form we can put a power as minus one so these both are equal there is no confusion till now now the next step okay so the what the next step is i need to find the derivative so what i'll do d upon dz of sigma of z that would be equal to now for derivative i will apply the chain rule and that will be 1 plus e to the power of minus z whole to the power of minus 2 d upon dz and i need to find the derivative of this term also so 1 plus e to the power of minus z okay so that will be d upon d of z sigma of z that will be equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z whole square in bracket i'll find the derivative of this one so the derivative of this one will be d of dz of 1 plus d of dz of e to the power of minus z okay so this will be d upon dz sigma of z equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z whole square and in bracket 
now the derivative of 1 with respect to z will be 0 plus now what will be the derivative of e to the power of minus z e to the power of minus z is derivative with respect to z would be e to the power of minus z as it is and applying a chain rule the derivative of minus z would be minus 1 with respect to z so what this will give us d upon d of z sigma of z that will equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z whole square in square bracket what we have minus e to the power of minus z okay this we have so now this is equal to d upon d of z that is equal to now what we can do here we can uh, split this how we can split this we can split this as 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z into e to the power of minus z whole upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z okay so this will become d upon dz equal to now for simplification simplification what i do i subtract and add one here so what this will become this will become 1 upon e to the power 1 plus e to the power of minus z and we take common as 1 plus e to the power of minus z whole upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z minus 1 upon 1 plus minus 1 minus or oh, sorry 1 plus e to the power of minus z okay so these two will get cancelled okay this is clearly visible here and also what we have 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z and this is denoted as sigma of z okay oh i forgot to write sigma of z here so i'll write this also so next now let's let us move to the next slide so what this simplifies to we have the equation as d upon d of z sigma of z equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z in bracket 1 minus 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z we have this calculation and what we can write here as d upon d of z sigma of z equal to what we can write instead of 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of z this is equal to sigma of z in bracket 1 minus sigma of z okay am i writing it correctly and this will be equal to d upon d of z sigma of z equal to instead of writing sigma of z we can also write a into 1 minus a okay i can write this here a into 1 minus a okay now i'll write this in the computation graph also so what my value da upon dz came out to be it came out to be a into 1 minus a now if i want to find the value of dz so it will be a and a will get cancelled 1 minus a and 1 minus a will get cancelled and so the value of dz would be a minus y i'll make a box here so this value is clearly visible to you okay so now we have find out the derivative with respect to the intermediate value a we have also found out the values with respect to the intermediate variable z and now finally we have some more variables that is we need to find the derivative with respect to the intermediate variables that is w1 and w2 and how we can find the derivatives with respect to w1 and w2 
the intermediate the derivative of loss function l with respect to the intermediate variable w1 can also be represented as d of w1 this we have seen in the previous notations and this would be ultimately equal to x1 times of dz in this way it can be simplified and again for finding the differentiation of loss function with respect to the intermediate variable w2 this can be written and the simple form as d of w2 and that would be equal to x2 into dz okay and also there is one more variable that is b so i need to find the derivative of my final cost function with respect to b also so it will be db and this will be equal to dz only okay so you need to keep in mind and now what you have to do after these step after these step what you need to do is you need to have the updated equations and what my updated equations are we need to update the parameters w1 w2 and b so we'll update w1 as w1 colon equal to w1 minus alpha times of dw1 value of dw1 is already obtained here and w2 will be updated at w2 colon equal to w2 minus alpha times of dw2 okay d w2 and how b is updated b can be updated as b colon equal to b minus alpha times of db okay so this is how my parameters w1 w2 and b can be updated okay so now in this video lecture what we have done is we have only uh, used a single training examples and that is why because we are using the sing single training example so we are using the loss function corresponding to the single training example but now what will happen if we will use m training example for solving this computation graph and finding the gradient so if we will use m training example then instead of using the loss function we will have to find the derivative or the gradient using the computation graph of the cost function okay so we we'll look at this example that is when we have m training example in the next video lecture okay so i hope this much would have been clear to you these are all the mathematical operations or the calculus that has been performed effectively for you you need to have a little bit lo logic and a knowledge about calculus derivatives and chain rule also in order to solve this question i hope this much is very much clear to you and thanks for watching this video lecture i hope this lecture would have been very much informative to you don't forget to like and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you